Hi everyone. I am very happy to welcome you all to Dr. JGS Virtual Academy of Commerce. In this video, I am going to take you through an important exercise from the chapter Ratio Analysis. Let us get into the problem. Using the following accounting information, construct a balance sheet. The information provided in the problem are the gross profit 6 lakh rupees, which stands for 20% of sales. Shareholders equity amounted 5 lakh rupees. Credit sales to total sales 80%. That means 80% of the total sales is for credit and the remaining 20% of sales is done for cash. Total assets turnover ratio. It should be done on the basis of sales. Normally it should be done on the basis of cost of goods sold but the problem specifically says it should be done on the basis of sales which stands for three times. Average collection period of debtors 18 days. We need to consider only 360 days as the number of days per year. Current ratio 1.6 times, long term debt to equity 40%. So these are all the accounting information provided in the problem based on which we are going to construct the balance sheet of the business enterprise. Now let's start with the gross profit for which the amount is given and at the same time its relationship with sales is given in terms of percentage. Gross profit 20% of sales is equal to 6 lakhs. Therefore, sales 100% is equal to 6 lakhs divided by 20 into 100. You get the amount of 30 lakhs. This is what the value of sales. Now, cost of goods sold is equal to sales minus gross profit. Sales is 30 lakhs and the gross profit is 6 lakhs. Therefore, the balance 24 lakhs is nothing but cost of goods sold. Now, sales is done for both cash and credit. Look at the decision tree what I have drawn. Total sales 30 lakhs. Credit sales stands for 80%. Cash sales is 20%. Therefore, 24 lakhs of 30 lakhs of sales is made for credit, 6 lakhs of the 30 lakhs of sales is made for cash. Now let's get into the next ratio given in the problem, total assets turnover ratio. As I said it should be done based on sales in this problem. Since the problem has directed us to make use of sales as a basis, we have written the formula sales divided by total assets is equal to 3 by 1. If sales with the weight of 3 is equal to 30 lakhs, total assets with the weight of 1 is equal to 10 lakhs. That's what we can understand here. Now the next ratio given in the problem is long term debt to equity. Long term debt divided by equity is equal to 40 percent. So 40 by 100. Fine. In that we know equity is amounted 5 lakh rupees according to the problem. See look at the problem, it says shareholders equity is amounted 5 lakhs. Therefore, if equity 100% is equal to 5 lakhs, long term debt 40% is equal to 5 lakh divided by 100 into 40, it gives us 2 lakh rupees proportionately. That's a value of long term liability or long term debt. Now let us form an equation with regard to balance sheet. In the liability side, we have equity, we have long term debt and the balance would be current liabilities. In the asset side, we have already calculated the total assets. What is the value of total assets according to this? See, 10 lakh rupees. Therefore, now you write total assets value to 10 lakhs, equity value 5 lakhs, long term debt that we calculated amounted 2 lakhs. Therefore, the balance in the liability side is nothing but 3 lakhs, which is the value of current liabilities. If you know current liabilities, through current ratio, you can come to know the value of current assets. Now, current ratio is equal to current assets divided by current liability is equal to 1.6 divided by 1. If current liability 1 is equal to 3 lakhs, 1.6 is equal to 3 lakh divided by 1 into 1.6. The answer is what? 4 lakh 80 thousand. That's a value of current assets in total. Fine. The next ratio what they have given in the problem is average collection period of debtors. 
the formula is 360 days that is what given in the problem it is not 365 for this problem we are informed to take 360 days as the number of days per year so 360 days divided by credit sales into accounts receivable there it is supposed to be average accounts receivable but in the absence of information about opening accounts receivable you can very well take closing accounts receivable alone in this situation instead of average accounts receivable so 18 days is the answer for average collection period according to the problem so 18 is equal to 360 days divided by credit sales we calculated it as 24 lakhs into accounts receivable so using cross multiplication you can write like accounts receivable is equal to 18 into 24 lakhs divided by 360 the answer is what 1 lakh 20 thousand rupees that's a value of a accounts receivable now we are ready for preparing a balance sheet listen to me in the liability side we have written shareholders equity amount at 5 lakhs that was very well given in the problem now long term debt that we calculated as 2 lakh rupees current liabilities also we calculated it is amounted 3 lakhs so the total of the balance sheet comes to 10 lakhs fine the same should come in the asset side as well now listen to me accounts receivable we calculated it separately with the help of a, a formula accounts receivable see listen 1 lakh 20 thousand that you write what is the value of total current assets we calculated the value of total current assets as 4 lakh 80 thousand accounts receivable is also an element of current assets therefore from 4 lakh 80 thousand the value of current assets if you subtract the value of accounts receivable amounted 1 lakh 20 thousand the balance 3 lakh 60 thousand rupees is the value of other current assets that you have recorded so these two have been recorded now now the balance in the asset side of the balance sheet is nothing but fixed assets so this is supposed to be the balancing figure in this problem that is why i have put a circle around it that's nothing but balancing figure this is an interesting problem i hope you know you would also experience the same like me with regard to this particular problem and i would very firmly say that this is a very important problem in ratio analysis so i suggest you to watch this video for a couple of times to gain better understanding over this step-by-step -step procedure of calculating all the items that are required to prepare balance sheet so wish you good luck everybody i'll meet you in another video bye for now all of you